A few months ago, around May, I built a clone versus droid Lego Star Wars chess set, and we're back again, this time for the original trilogy, and you may remember that video. I don't know what I was thinking with my facial hair, but we did use minifigures. This time, there are no minifigures in this entire chess board. In fact, I haven't even built the chess board yet. We'll get to that in just a second, but... This time for our chessboard, we are using the buildable characters that LEGO have given out the last couple of years for May 4th. And there will be a short coming out if you want to look at a few of these in closer detail, but we will be going over each and every single one of these in this video. LEGO's only made, I think, about seven of these. We've got Kenobi, Han, Luke, and Chewie, which are ones they did quite a few years ago, and then this year, last year, and the more recent years, around May 4th, we've been getting Princess Leia, Darth Vader, and Yoda. And because Yoda doesn't actually show up in A New Hope, I have decided to include an Empire Strikes Back Imperial as well, just to balance out, but besides them two characters, Every other buildable figure is featured in and at least has a scene or some screen time in A New Hope. So I'm going to call this an A New Hope Lego Star Wars chessboard, but we do have Yoda and another Imperial that doesn't show up in A New Hope. You just have to ignore them and imagine they're someone else. But like I said, I haven't built the chessboard, so let's get straight into that now. And I want to take you through how I build it, because it's very similar to the Mills plates you'll see in a Lego City. And if you're not a fan of Lego Cities, you won't know how to build a solid base plate. So let's get straight into building the chessboard. Like I said, this chessboard isn't going to be like the last one. For the last one, we got a white base plate, a 32 by 32 base plate, and just put a few 4 by 4 I don't even think it was black. I'm pretty sure it was grey plates, because I don't have enough black, which is Something that I've realized building this once again. But first up, I am outlining this. We are building this a brick taller than the last one. The last one, as I said, parts of the base plate could even be seen. And it was a proper flimsy board. We are building this solid this time around. So I'm just going around the edge every four studs, switching from black to white and making sure the corners also line up. So you'll see at the corners, we have either two one by twos or a one by four and then on the other side of the corner, a 1x3 to give it the two 1x4s on each side in the same colour to correspond to the tile that will be placed on top. And I really like what LEGO have done with their new chessboard, where they've made it look like a wicker basket around the outside, but there is no way I have enough black and white slopes to do that. And once I've done with the outline, you'll see me move on to the innards, which again, I'm doing in yellow. Red is technically the cheapest Lego colour, I believe, but I have so many yellow bricks that I don't use. I'm not quite sure when my red ones are gone. I tend to use them for the insides of Star Wars models, so perhaps a few of them have been used in the city and larger mocks like my AV7 Cannon. I start off just using a 2x2 to hold up the 4x4 plates, but later on we get to 2x4 plates and I even use some 1x4s in white. I really don't have a lot of white plates and I'm definitely looking at the Tantive and New Republic ship because of that. To support the 2x4 and the 1x4 plates, all I do is, rather than leaving a gap between them, I make sure for the 2x4 at least one side has a complete row, supporting the middle of the 2x4 plates, and then when we get to the 1x4s, and when we're just using 2x4s in general, I just use these yellow bricks to create rows on the inside of this chessboard. And not only does that support the plates on top a lot more and save any falling in if you were to put a bit of pressure on the top, because we got to remember, Lego is still a kid's toy as well as an awesome display piece for us adults. So we don't only want it to look good, but we also want it to hold up if a kid wants to play chess or just create a battle scene with the chess pieces. And though this is quite a simplistic model, this is Basically, all mills plating is if you want to create a Lego city and it stops the base plate being flexible with everything. If you add a bit of height and create two parallel layers, you're going to give it the rigidity that it's missing initially. And, and in this case, we've got the black and white colors to match the two different sides of a chessboard, give it that classic look. And it works great for what we need. And now that we can put the final piece on, we have a completed chessboard that does look really good. And we'll get to the characters and chess pieces in a minute there's a few that you'll probably be able to recognize but the whole way around the side of this plate matches up to the top we've just got to double check because 
Sometimes you can make mistakes and trying to pick this up is a bit harder now, but this is, well, it's meant to be absolutely solid. Perhaps I should get my hammer and just go over it, making sure all the studs are connected. Maybe not bashing it against the desk is another good thing as well, but you can see there is absolutely no bend in this base plate, which is really, really cool. All the studs are in, nothing's gonna fall off unless you smack it against your desk. But of course, a chessboard is quite literally useless without any pieces. You can't even play checkers without at least the pawns. So let's introduce our chess pieces. So we've gone with the pawns of the Empire Storm Troopers. My fiance actually designed this helmet piece because you can see that it looks like you've got the big eyes of the Storm Trooper at the top. And I think it's an all round solid model. It does look like a Storm Trooper in brick built form. I have got some studs showing on the back of these troopers just because I didn't have enough of these snot bricks with just the one stud out the site. So completely ignore them and use whatever pieces are at your disposal when you're building these because there are so many different pieces that can connect the arms and the legs for so many of these figures. And like these studs that I've used here, if you don't want to use these studs and would prefer the look of a Celica 1x2 plate, you can definitely use them instead. And we've only got four of these, which if you have played chess or at least know of its existence, you might know that we need eight pawns for each side in chess. Well, I have gone with two different characters for the pawns here, and it make a bit more sense later on when we look at the rebel side, but I wonder if you can guess which trooper this is, because it does look like a death trooper, and you wouldn't be wrong for thinking that. It's actually meant to be a tie pilot, and once again, it's a similar design to the troopers, just in first color, and rather than the bigger blaster, we've got that small pistol in the tight pilot's hand. So there are four of these that also will be joining the storm troopers, and they make up the pawns of the Galactic Empire. And I think we can jump straight on to the Rebel Alliance before we get a look at the other figures, just so this does make a bit of sense, because you might wonder why we have troopers and pilots. Well, first off, I'm going to introduce the Rebel X-Wing pilot, which we do have. I've tried to differ these a little bit more than the Imperials. Of course, the Imperials are in armor. There's only so much you can do, but with the X-Wing pilots, initially, I was gonna change the stud on their head to match the different colors, red for Luke, green for Wedge, but instead I decided we'll have two with this lighter skin tone face. So these can go straight on the chessboard and you'll notice I'm not putting them opposite the TIE pilots. They're opposite the stormtroopers, so they're gonna be battling the TIE pilots as they move forward. A lot of thought has gone into this chessboard. We have a medium nougat toll for a different skin tone and also a brown toll because the Rebel Alliance is a bit more diverse than the Empire was. Well, I guess the Empire was a little diverse anyway, but I mean in terms of their appearance. They showed their faces and that meant they looked a bit different to all the bucket heads, which look almost identical to each other. And then to combat the troopers, we have our team of rebels led by Captain Antilles himself, which does look like the topless man from Indiana Jones. I don't really remember any of the Indiana Jones characters' names, but this is meant to be Antilles in his different tan jacket. I just don't own the pieces that I like in their specific colors. And that hasn't been too much a problem for these characters, but Antilles is only one rebel. And as he is a named figure, we'll put him in the middle of the four, but we do need three others. So we have our rebel trooper here, which again, I would have liked a sand blue color, but I've taken inspiration from the Han Solo buildable May 4th promo, which we will look at in just a second. And I think it does look well enough to match with all of these other characters. And then for the hat, I've used this modified slope piece, which works so well. I've gone through a few different iterations of that helmet, and that was the one I settled with. We also need a friend for the Rebel, so who better than Rebel friend from the Lego Star Wars games? I don't know if this is any sort of canonical characters. The same as the last one, but in that red color. So I've taken some 
creative liberties with the fourth one because we have a rebel friend. We definitely need another one. So I've gone and made a pink rebel trooper because if they've got the sand blue and red uniforms, there's definitely bound to be a pink one. It just looks really cool. And I actually had the snot brick for this one. So it adds a bit of color to the rebellion between the bright orange X-Wing jumpsuits. And now we can move on to the other chess pieces. I think we'll start with the Rebellion because most of these are May 4th promos such as for the Queen of the Rebellion we have Leia herself which does make sense I suppose she must have been heir to Alderaan at some point and I'm sure the people of Alderaan still would call her Queen if not Princess. I'm not quite sure which name they would use. It's definitely used in one of the books I think Aftermath have her meet with the remainder of the Alderaan people which just have arranged their ships where the planet used to be. And I can never remember which character, whether the king or the queen, is meant to go on their colour. So I'm going to put the queen. Princess Leia is on a white tile. If that's wrong, feel free to select me in the comments because I really don't play chess often and when I do, it's usually on the computer. We have our first casualty in this tight pilot and I have chosen not to stud these pieces or characters down because they do slot into the studs so they don't wobble around on top which is why I haven't told out the chessboard but you could definitely add a jumper toe in there if you want some more security. For the king of the rebellion I've actually gone with Luke Skywalker which does sort of make sense to me he is the main character of the original trilogies. People will argue it's Anakin, but we see more character development for Luke Skywalker. And again, this is another May 4th promo that LEGO have already made. So the instructions are out there somewhere. I'm not quite sure where you'd find the instructions for these. Perhaps they are on Brickset. So I'll try to let you know where you can get instructions for these. But if you just search buildable layer May 4th promo, buildable Luke, I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. This is an older one like Luke now, but we also have Ben Kenobi and as we have Kenobi and Yoda I might as well bring Yoda up as well he's a little shorter but it definitely gets the character across I've made these bishops because they can zigzag through with their Jedi speed move across the board and I think they work as bishops I've not really paired these up with any imperial characters but they do just feel like they should be bishops. I'm not entirely sure why that is. So we'll put Ben Kenobi next to Leia and I think Yoda can go next to Luke for shadowing his training in the next two movies. Now for horses we need someone that travels a bit awkwardly you know gets the little jobs done. I feel like they are the droids of the chessboard which really doesn't make sense when it comes to the imperial side but first up we have C-3PO and he looks like the villain from uh, it was one of the Lego Batman CMFs and again I don't really know my Lego Batman or know my Batman for that matter but one of the pencil head villains and again this gets C-3PO across I'd like to see a little printing on these perhaps for future May 4 promos but that is asking a lot and I think C-3PO will go on the side of Ben Kenobi and who better to have accompanying C-3PO than Han, so I'm joking, then R2-D2, of course it had to be R2-D2. I'm quite happy with how this model's come across. This definitely wouldn't be a future promo, but I think it works for R2-D2. The studs aren't exactly connected on the shoulder piece. If you'd like to know how I built R2-D2, it's just simply a snot brick and a one by one brick on the insides. And then I'm sure you can work out all of the other pieces for yourself. I cover it with an ingot, leave the studs on the side spare so they look like at least they're going into the legs and R2 will be going next to Yoda. I guess similar height, that's not going to look too bad. Might have looked better with 3PO and R2 the other way around but you can arrange this chessboard however you like and perhaps even center Kenobi and Yoda as the king and queen. You've already seen Han Solo and we are on to our rooks or our castles now and I think the Han Solo figure is actually a really nicely made figure. I took inspiration from the jacket to build my rebel crew so the rebels are really a recolor of Han Solo with a different piece on top but 
Han will go on Leia's side. Again, we will continue placing a character near, then far, and Chewbacca is the tallest of the lot, even taller than the recent Darth Vader from this year. And I think they've got the character across well. There's so little details and Chewie doesn't even have hands, so he doesn't have an accessory, but I guess he doesn't need hands when he's got Han and he can go the opposite side as the other Rook, which is fitting because they do charge around the Death Star like they own the place. Now we are getting into the interesting side and we'll start off with the King of the Empire, which is Darth Vader. He's not the one in control, he's not the most powerful, but he's definitely up there in terms of royalty. This is the May 4th figure from earlier on in this year, and I do hope we see more of these because I built Yoda in a Smith's here in the UK, it's a toy shop, and I also built an X-Wing, which was a promo going along the side, but we've only got original trilogy characters. Again, Darth Vader is opposite to Luke because the reason you don't put kings and queens opposite each other and they go opposite themselves is because once the pawns are out of the way, the queen can just easily take the king. So the kings are always against the kings. I think the kings are actually meant to be on their coloured square, but we'll keep it as it is as I've already laid out the Rebel Alliance and move on to the queen of the empire, Papa Palpatine himself. I really like this Palpatine. I think if they are going to continue with the original trilogy. I guess Palpatine doesn't show up in A New Hope, does he? So there are two Imperials. I completely forgot about Palpatine not showing up, but his presence is definitely, definitely felt. And I've changed up the slope on the back. I didn't own one of those slope pieces they use for layout. So I've attached a two by three on the back using some more snot bricks that I used for the arms as well. And you've got Palpatine's electricity flowing through his fingers and even the nice silver clip that he uses to hold his robes together. You don't want them falling down when you're playing chess. And Palpatine will go on the black tile next to Darth Vader. Now for the bishops, I was looking at some important figureheads in the Empire, especially during A New Hope. And first off, we have Tarkin, who was very important with the upholding of the first Death Star and making sure Things were running smoothly, so Vader didn't have to worry himself with any more issues on top of the whole Rebellion Rogue One situation. So we do have Tarkin next to Vader, and we also have another Imperial that shows up that isn't really an Imperial. They are a bounty hunter that the Empire later hires, Boba Fett, another iconic character. They are in A New Hope in the special editions at least. It depends which version you're watching, but if you're watching it on Disney+, Plus, you will see Boba Fett on Tatooine with Jabba as he is one of Jabba's best bounty hunters, taken after his father, trying to be the best bounty hunter in the galaxy, but with Cad Bane surviving, that is a hard title to take for himself. I've also used his blaster, which I did give to his minifigure. I don't think I've really changed anything since I last shown it off. But if you haven't seen it, then this is a really cool gun. It's just the pistol element with a one by one brown cone and a candle piece, which works very well for the Boba Fett minifigure. Now we're on to the droids of the Empire, I guess, which I'm afraid to say we don't actually have any droids here. But I do feel like what the officers do for the Empire with their different pen codes and all the different technological bits, they're sort of the droids of the rebellion. They're doing the little jobs that just need to be done. And you do have protocol droids, astromech droids, mouse droids in the empire. But I just feel like these different officers and imperial important people also get quite a lot done. This is Yularen head of the ISB at this time and the former fleet admiral or grand admiral, I think he was at some point, which is the rank held by Thrawn. And it was tempting not to include Thrawn in here, but I wanted to stick as accurate to A New Hope as I can. So Yularen is the horse getting the odd little task done, making sure the security of the Empire is locked down. And he will go opposite Tarkin, because I'm sure the two of them probably don't get along as well as we'd expect. And we also have Dane, who is the Imperial I don't really know their titles based on the uniforms, but he's the Imperial in the black outfit aboard the Tantive when Vader charges on and tries to get the location of the Rebel Alliance. So another important character in A New Hope, and this time we can put him next to Tarkin because I feel like they'd work well together. Now for the Rooks, 
we have first up the Imperial Spy, Garin Dunn, who <laughs> does look a bit amusing at first. I've tried to get the snout at the front and I think I've done a decent job with it, but it's definitely a hard character. I don't see Lego trying to make for a promo anytime soon, but it works. He is an Imperial Spy, again, probably just a sort of bounty hunter hired by the Empire. So he goes on Boba's side, but last but not least, we have the character from Empire Strikes Back to match up with Yoda and another Imperial that is known for just charging straight in with his 8080, and that is General Veers. I really like the thought of an 8080 just marching down the chessboard, and I think next time we'll have to go with some different ships. So we'll have the Death Star as the, I don't know if that'll be the King or the Queen. Well, we've got two Death Stars, so we can have Death Star 1 and Death Star 2. But right now, Veers completes our chessboard. We'll take a look at it in a second. It was very hard to get all the different elements in the right blue. Again, I'd love to use Sand Blue, but Sand Blue don't have any Snot Brick elements that I could find, at least not one by ones that fit on the back of the character. So Veers can go on our chessboard and now we'll take a closer look. And here we go, the 32nd character placed on the chessboard, which is quite funny because I built it on a 32 by 32 chess board or Lego base plate even. So it's worked out quite well numerically. I like it when the numbers add up, but we have our full side of Rebel heroes, including four X-Wing pilots, four Rebel heroes, Han, 3PO, Kenobi, Leia, Luke, Yoda, R2, just hidden at the back there, and Chewbacca. And then over at the Imperials, four troopers, four TIE pilots, Viz, Dane, Tarkin, Vader, the Emperor himself, Boba Fett, Yularen, and Garin Dunn. So let me know if there are any other characters you think I could have included instead of Yoda, instead of Viz, and I guess instead of the Emperor. I think we can excuse the Emperor. He's definitely needed to be on the Imperial side, unless you'd rather have Vader and Tarkin as King and Queen and someone replacing the Emperor. I'll leave the last video of the Clone Wars chessboard on screens for you to check out as well after this one, and I'll definitely have to play with this after the video. Thank you so much for watching, and may the bricks be with you always.